Hi, you're listening to Linda Pinizzato at the Hayes FM. We were talking about different styles of townhouses today. And we're trying to reflect newcomers coming into the country that may not really be completely familiar with the different types that are available out there. So the second one that you might want to think about is, is it still a townhouse, but it's more known as a stacked townhouse. Now, a stacked townhouse has a lot of space. I mean, the square footage in some of these units is unbelievable. I mean, commonly, some of them are a minimum like 1,500, 2,000 square feet, depending. I mean, that would be like for three-bedroom units. Certainly very conducive to family atmospheres. However, there are things that you cannot get in these type of properties. For one, generally speaking, they will have a common hallway area to get to the different units. Because don't forget, as a stacked townhouse, what that means is if you take a low-rise building and you have a two-floor condominium, and then on the third floor, you have another two-floor condominium, and then on the fifth floor, you have another two-floor condominium. So in other words, this building is six stories high, but there's actually three condominium townhouses in each block. So depending on which one you buy, You may be on the main levels with the second story as your bedroom area. You could be on the center area. You could be on the top area. If you're on the top area, chances are you may have a rooftop patio. On the lower level, you may end up having it below ground for your entry door or maybe on the main level ground. It really depends on the elevation of how this complex was built. But either way, you know, generally speaking, that kind of a complex, a, a large multi-family building stacked townhouse complex could very well be that way. Now that doesn't offer, unless you're on the main floor, you don't have easy access to the exterior. On the upper levels, you may have that balcony or like I said, the rooftop terrace. But you know, stacked townhouses come in a variety of different designs. Now that particular design, you would have definitely underground parking. And you may even have, on the lower levels, you may have a door that takes you from the underground directly into your unit, whereas the second and the third levels townhouse units wouldn't have that kind of an amenity. The other style is something of a parquette. I know there's one down here off of Lakeshore, and a parquette means is that you walk into the parquette area, so you're not coming down Common Street like a, a roadway, but it's actually like a parquette. And the door entrance is through the park. There's quite a bit of walking in these kind of complexes. If you're driving, it's not a problem because you go into the underground and most of them will have an access that takes you right into the basement of your particular unit. The units are not stacked. Okay, they're independent units, but they're designed in a parkette. So basically what that means is if you just think of a huge park and you have doors to all the different units in and around the park area. So if your children wanted to play, they could run out anywhere that they want because there's absolutely no cars and no traffic. That common area is basically divided off as a communal area that everybody can play or be outside or walk around or whatever. Parking is excluded down to the underground and then that common area. Now, is there any difficulty with that design? Sometimes the design may be only because you have an awfully large underground parking space. So you need to take into account that sometimes those budgets may reflect that extremely large parking area. So there is a common expenditures, which would actually be higher because there isn't really as much sub-metering going on. So you may pay one common amount that would be divided between everybody because of the way the structure has been put together. So stacked townhouses and standard townhouses and these parquet style townhouses, they all offer something different. Then, believe it or not, you can have the stacked and the parquet style together. I know there's one over on Brahms Grove here in Mississauga, for instance. And they have that common area, but they also have different levels, elevations of the units. So, you know, in most cases, that kind of style, of course, may be somewhat less expensive but you do get still a lot of space inside the units and certainly for families. You know, if you're getting away from the standard one or two bedroom condo apartment, because condo apartments, you know, they, uh, they may not be quite as large. They tend to run anywhere from, you know, 500, 600, 800, a thousand square feet. 
when you start to get into 1,500 square foot condominium apartments, the maintenance fees get quite high. And, you know, you do get some size in it, but if you have children, you know, townhouses, stacked townhouses may be a little bit more conducive to the style of living to offer more of a friendlier atmosphere and interaction for your children with neighboring children and being able to come back and forth to school and whatnot without the risk of, of, you know, elevators and so on. You know, and let's talk about that for a moment, elevators. You know, newcomers coming into the country, we do have a very safe country. There's no question about that. I mean, granted, we have our situations that come up on our daily news. And, you know, with such a huge population, how can we avoid that? It's impossible. And we just hope that, you know, that people can come together. Like most of the times when you see, I know when the tragedy happened with the marathon in Boston, how people came together was absolutely beautiful. And what they did was, although it was such a tragic situation, they rejoiced on unity and spirit and community friendships. And the result of that was is to, to give an undying strength to the victims and to the families of the victims and people that suffered a lot of tragedy and changes in their lifestyle because of what happened. And I think that that kind of rejoice and that strength, we need to unite just across our country and work together on so many various things. And I think that if we can hold hands and, you know, teach one another very important things, I think it helps everybody. You know, this morning I turned around, I've got to pull away from this because I read this this morning. It's actually kind of cool. It's in this book called The Uncle John's Unstoppable, (laughs) you'll laugh, bathroom reader. But listen, bear with me. And I'm going to read this because I think that there's a real message there. And I know that when I try to give information to the public about condominiums, there's actually a message behind trying to give them help. I've been extremely fortunate for so many years doing so well in real estate. I think somewhere along the way, the man upstairs decided that this was my mission in life and to really, truly try to make a change. So here goes. And so that you have to change the Americans in your mind to Canadians, but I have to read it as it stands because it actually says, and so my fellow Americans, not Canadians. So, and so my fellow Americans, ask not what your country can do for you. Ask what you can do for your country. Does that sound familiar? My fellow citizens of the world, ask not what America will do for you, but what together we can do for the freedom of man. Finally, whether you are citizens of America or citizens of the world, ask of us here the same high standards of strength and sacrifice which we ask of you. With a good conscience, our only sure reward, with history, the final judge of our deeds, let us go forth to lead the land we love, asking his blessing, and his help, but knowing that here on earth, God's work must truly be our own. You know, we talk about really, you know, good faith, not necessarily religious faith, but even good faith in business transactions and good faith and transparency and governance and good reason as to why you would want to step forward and volunteer and help out. And I know on several different shows, I talked a lot about how the Condo Act has no, you know, unfortunately, there is no governance and there is no transparency. And, you know, at the same token, what happens is is that it opens the door for very evil people to step through and manipulate situations within their condominiums. And, you know, I had also mentioned about reasons why people would actually do this. And, you know, the sad part about it is, is that it hurts our economy. It hurts everything that we stand for. And the message here, you know, with newcomers is, is that, you know, we really want you to learn and understand the way that the condominium structure works so that you will have knowledge to protect yourself from these kind of things. Because unfortunately, right now, it's a long process to have changes made in this Condo Act. And I think if people that are involved in this review truly reflect what I have just read, they will understand that it's not about the deep pockets. It's not about the revenue base of the businesses. It's it's not about, you know, trying to make money or gain more strength. Or it, It's actually about trying to fix something that is not working. 
and fix it so that it benefits everyone. So whether you're a newcomer, whether you're a first-time buyer, whether you're a senior and you're downsizing, whether you're a single woman, a single man, you know, any sexual denomination out there, whatever your reasons are that you want to step forward and buy a condominium, you need to feel that you are protected and you're buying into something that is going to help you personally, help your family, help your investments, help your will down the road. If it's, if it's equity that you're trying to build through your life time in order for you to leave for your family. All of these variables put together are a result of what you would achieve during your lifetime, a sample of what you were all about, what you accomplished in your life. The strength of home ownership is not just about buying a home and living in it. It's about building your future. I was just taking a look right now, you know, the ABCs of condominiums. That's a really, you know, they have it in PDF form going back again to Canada Mortgage and Housing. And, you know, we talk about these different styles. I mean, that's no different if you're deciding on whether or not you want to buy a new condominium, whether or not you want to buy a resale condominium. It doesn't matter which one it is. There will be rules, regulations, and bylaws. And there will also be a condo document. And there will also be things called exclusive use common property elements. And your exclusive use common property elements is basically what I had talked about. Everything that you and all your fellow neighbors in your complex can enjoy together. Because it's a common area you all pay for, you all own it, and you should be able to use it. Now, in some cases, there could be a small cost. You know, for instance, if you were, you know, booking a party room, there may be a cost to be using it. And that relates to the fact of wear and tear and so on to make it fair. You know, you've got people in the building that may have never, ever used these amenities. Portions of it is included in the maintenance fees. But, you know, a lot of times it's really important that, you know, these amenities are being looked after and updated and to make sure that there's no damage and make sure that security is uh, looking after um, these amenities at the time that they're being used so that there's no problems, even not necessarily with people live in the building, but maybe visitors that have come to the party. So we're going back to newcomers. You know, I think that it's such a privilege to be able to, you know, come into Canada and there's so many different opportunities. I mean, we are known as the land of opportunity without a doubt. And you've had to go through a tremendous amount of due diligence on behalf of citizenship and immigration in order for you to start your life here. I mean, I'm sure you must have had an application status. Obviously, there would have been a processing time. I mean, there's expenditures and fees that are involved, you know, certain checks and, you know, different crosses of your T's and your dotting of your I's. And not only that is I think that there's an element there on the type of skilled trade that you may offer and you've brought to this country, which, you know, in turn helps everyone. So under federal skills, I know that there's some kind of a trade program that offers different benefits and particulars on people that have decided to come to the country. So when you look at all of those specific trades, it's no different from us being myself being in real estate. I mean, that is a specific trade. That's an expertise that I started, you know, when I went for my courses back in 1979 and became a registered realtor. And over the course of 33 years, I've been able to obtain a wealth of information with respect to the real estate market. I mean, having gone through all the different markets since that time, I mean, if I told any newcomer today that at one point our interest rates at 21 and three quarters percent, I don't believe that they would even believe me. <laughs> they would say, well, that can't be possible. I mean, you can get mortgages today at under less than three percent. How could you possibly have had that big of an interest rate? Well, we did. And we've had different incentives and government programs out there, which, uh, you know, at one point the government felt that they were important, like urea formaldehyde, for instance, when they gave out grants. And then no sooner did they give the grant to put the urea formaldehyde into the homes because they felt it would be an energy saving uh, device, then they realized that there was a health impact. And therefore, anyone that put it in received a grant to take it out. 
So there's a lot of different things. I know right now, you know, even the home buyer's plan, there's a tremendous amount of initiatives out there on the home buyer's plans in order for people to learn how to save money to step forward in order for them to have the down payment so that they can then, you know, step into home ownership. So, you know, as a country, we offer a lot of different programs to help people immigrate to our country. And what we want to do is we want to celebrate the contributions of our heritage and how we got to where we are today. I mean, if you look at what changes have gone on in the last 10 years, even in the last five years, last night I was driving on the uh, gardener coming in from Toronto, and oh, wow, I mean, the landscape alone, the landscape of our city has changed dramatically with so many condominium apartments everywhere, not just in Toronto, in Mississauga, in Hamilton, Burlington, in Ottawa. It's everywhere, Quebec. I mean, you know, we can go to Vancouver, we can go to different provinces. It's everywhere. Condo owners need to stand up, whether you are a newcomer to the country, whether you've lived here forever, like me, (laughs) you need to stand up. Stand up for your rights and pay attention to the Condo Act and certainly be involved. You're listening to Linda Pinizzato at the Hayes FM, the condo expert. I will be right back with more wonderful, detailed information for you. 